Are you going to run out of money because of health care costs and retirement? Oh, my goodness. Don't you hear the studies? We're all going to run out of money because of health care costs and retirement. <sighs> no, no. Stop preying on the fear of soon to be retirees, people in the investment industry. It started to tick me off, actually. I mean, I just it boggles my mind. The level of playing on people's fear of running out of money keeping them from enjoying their retirement, their well-deserved retirement, enjoying the money they squirreled away, it actually started to tick me off. And you need to stop because you're actually, again, you're preying on the fears that are unfounded without question they're unfounded and stop it. It's not right. It's not right. And unfortunately, a lot of people are falling for this. So if you're a consumer of financial information, my friends, and you're falling for this trap every day, you hear healthcare costs, ah, stop. Take a deep breath. Let's look at the numbers because it's absolutely disingenuous. And I, I, I know why people are doing it because, the, it, I, well, let me just go into it. Welcome again to another edition of Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm kind of frustrated today. I, I just did a video on uh, how 90% of seniors are paying overpaying for health their uh, prescription drug costs. And I've been reading a lot on, uh, on health care costs and retirement, Medicare, uh, Medicaid, Medicaid's for poor people, but Medicare primarily, um, and all the different uh, Medicare Advantage policies, Medigaps, whatnot. And the one thing Medicare does not cover is long-term care. Let me just say it clearly as loud as I can. Medicare does not cover long-term care. It says it right there on page four of your Social Security statement. Medicare does not cover long-term care. So if you think Medicare covers long-term care and you've watched this video, you can no longer think that. Please look at your own social security statement. You'll see very explicitly it does not cover long-term care. Does Medicaid cover long-term care? Remember, Medicaid is for indigent people, poor people, essentially. <laughs> not essentially, literally. Um, and if you want to go the route of Medicaid planning, and I'm going to show you an article here about somebody who's going that route, uh, I, I invite you to think again. Go to a Medicaid facility, I, I invite you to. Yeah, there are some rooms in the more up the uh, nurse, uh, skilled nursing home cares and assisted living facilities, whatnot, where they do provide a couple beds for Medicaid recipients, but the likelihood of you getting in those beds is, is minute. Um, you ever, if you ever been in the military, it was like space A, space available. You ever heard that? And that means if they have the space uh, and you're in the, the, and your number's chosen, you'll get the room, that's for sure. But the, the likelihood of your number being chosen is so minute, it's not worth the even plan for that. Uh, VA, same thing. VA is absolutely space A, space available. So again, if you're a retired TRICARE or something like that, um, you can assume the VA will be there for sure, but don't assume it's going to be the coverage that you want in your in your dying days there. This is living to skilled nursing care is the way to go. But at the end of the day, what's the likelihood of you going in there relative to the fear that these guys are telling us? So here's a Fidelity study. They do this every year. They've been doing this for 15 years. And, and I, you know, I just... Now, right now it's 275. So here's 2016. Healthcare costs for couples in retirement rise to an estimated 260,000. Fidelity analysis shows this from 2016. I saw someplace uh, it's actually two, 275,000 now. And so I just did a quick analysis. I said, "Huh, that's interesting. What would be my uh, food costs? Let's take out healthcare and just say food costs for couples in retirement rise to an estimated what?" Let's say my wife and I, we spend $20,000 a year on food. Take my trusted calculator, boink. We're going to uh, eat $20,000 a year for food. We're going to inflate it by 3% a year. We're going to both die at uh, 85, so that'd be 20 years. And our future value on that would be $771,000. How come no one ever says food costs? It's, it's weird. So basically, you know, if we have $771,000 of total costs in food, we're going to back that up for inflation. I get all that. So let's just say food costs 500000 bucks for just simplicity. You never hear food care costs of couples of retirement rise to an estimated $500,000. You never hear that. <clears throat> never do, which is uh, which is funny um, because food is more important, frankly, because I hate to say it, but if you don't eat, you're going to die. <clears throat> so why do we do this? Well, because we're playing on the fears of people that they need to do more, do more than what they're already doing uh, to prepare for retirement where they're going to be you know, dying in a grave, eating ramen noodles someplace uh, in a pit. And it's just it's, it's bothersome to me. Um, so anyway, so let's let's look at this uh, study that Fidelity does, because I think it's interesting. Actually, I want to go back to this one right here, because this is a similar one. Boston College uh, Center for Retirement Research. And I actually I'm a huge fan of these guys over there BC on their social security stuff. I, I'm not a huge fan of this, this mentality here at all. 
um, in the lease. And again, I just, I don't, this is from February, 2010. You can look up if you want to see more recent one, that's fine. Uh, but here's a, uh, here's a healthcare. The, uh, what's the dis- distribution of lifetime healthcare costs from age 65 Healthcare costs loom is a major risk for all retirees with, with nursing home care as a real wild card. A typical couple at age 65 can expect to sp- a typical couple at age 65 can expect to spend over its remaining lifetime $197,000 with a 5% risk of exceeding $311,000 excluding nursing home care. So listen, my friends, we're not even including nursing home care. Whoa. And if you need nursing home care, it could go up to $570,000 with a 5% risk of exceeding $570,000. So Look, we're not even counting nursing home care, and look at the risk: three hundred eleven thousand dollars you can spend on nur- on uh, health care, and then on top of that, if you do need nursing home care, we're talking five hundred seventy thousand dollars. You're doomed, and yet you're sitting there thinking, "Oh my!" And I get it; it's, it's subductive. It absolutely is. You're sitting there thinking, "I don't have that kind of money. What do I do? What do I do?" Well, here's Fidelity; they're ready to help you. And what they should do? Oh, healthcare is health savings accounts can help address healthcare costs or retirements. Look, I am a huge fan of HSAs. You're not going to find a bigger proponent of vouchers for medical and any, you're just not. I'm a huge fan of HSAs without question. I think if they just said, that instead of having even Medicare, they just said, here's a $10,000 coupon, go buy your own policies, free to go over state lines. Yeah, man, we'd, the healthcare costs would drop significantly overnight as competition rears its beautiful, beautiful head in a pure capitalistic sense. HSAs are a wonderful step in that direction. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan. So HSAs are tied to health, high deductible health plans. The so two things go hand in hand. Basically, you're saying I'm going to pay for my basic stuff like an oil change in my car. I'm not going to file an insurance claim to get an oil change in my car or to change the filters in my HVAC units. I'm going to do that myself, and I'll pay the cost. And because of that, it's on me. However, if I get in a car accident and I need to get the rear end redone, the body work done, I am going to file an insurance claim because it's beyond my ability to control it. So because I'm paying for all the lower costs on my end and only the catastrophic cars, uh, I'm going to have it insured, the costs are going to go down substantially and it won't wipe me out because I have that catastrophic coverage. That's what health insurance should be. That's what insurance is supposed to be. You cover it for catas- catastrophes. It's a pool thing, insurance. I'm pooling my money with all these other people in there. The likelihood of any of us having an individual catastrophe is, is minimal, but the likelihood of someone having a catastrophe is high. We don't know who that someone's going to be, so we all pool, pool a little bit of money. So that way, when that something happens to that someone, he or she has his pool money to draw on so they don't have to be destitute. That's insurance. 101, man, it's incredible how it works. The likelihood of an individual thing happening to you specifically is nil or minimal. The likelihood of that thing happening to one of your group is is almost 100%. We know that it's going to happen to somebody. We just don't know who. And so we're going to pool our money together so that way we can protect for that one person who does have the bad luck and unfortunate of having that catastrophic event happening to them. That's insurance. But we don't say, oh, I have an oil change in my car. I'm going to file an insurance claim. That's insane. It's insane. And that's why our insurance costs are so high now, because all these low level things are costing us billing errors, billing. People got to do all that stuff. Just billions of dollars is waste and fraud without question. All right. So HSAs are a wonderful thing here. But <laughs> what I like about it, to help employees manage health care expenses, a growing number of companies are offering high deductible health plans with HSA. The popularity of HSAs are booming with the number of HSA accounts rising to 16.7 million, increase of 22 percent from the previous year. Fidelity provides HSAs for almost a half a million workers, and HSA has, has assets of $1.5 billion. All right. Hey, look, I don't care. Fidelity, look, you want to make money on HSA. I have no qualm with that at all. In fact, I did a video on Fidelity that they offer pretty good plans without question. Incredibly low fees, for sure. I don't have any problem with this in the least. None at all. But let's just get it through our heads. They're making it seem like this is going to make everyone destitute. Now, I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. Stay with a few seconds. Stay with me. Why that's just simply not a worry for some that most people need to have. So they're making it seem like this is going to haunt you. And they're saying we can offer a, uh, a plan of action, which, of course, they get paid on. And I don't have a qualm with that. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I love HSAs. I don't have any qualm with Fidelity. I do have a qualm with this uh, level of fear they're imputing on us. All right. So let's go into these guys. So they download full brief. 
And again, Center for Retirement Research at Boston University, uh, BC, BC, excuse me, not B. Uh, this is from March 2010. It's going to be the same. Nothing has changed. Um, and so what we say, the major health care expenses retired uh, households face include premiums for Medicare Part B and Part D, which covers drug-related expenses, prescription drug plans, like I just talked about in the video a few minutes ago, uh, premiums for Medicare Part D, Medicap and retiree health insurance premiums, co-pays related to Medicare covered services for those expenditures not fully covered uh, by Medigap or retiree health insurance, eyeglasses, dental care, health insurance, hearing aids. Um, and so that, you're paying premiums for your Medicare Advantage, for your Medigap, for your co-pays, your co-insurance, your premiums for Part B and Part D. Those are the major health expenses retired households face as those premiums. There's no getting around those. If you're going to be on Medicare, you're going to pay those premiums. There's no getting around it. Basically, it's 40 bucks a month for Part D, which is prescription drugs. I think the average the premium right now is about 134 a month for Medicare Part B. So anyone, every single person out there on Medicare right now is paying a minimum of one was that we'll just say one about 180 a month per beneficiary for their drug for their Medicare coverage without question. That's not debatable. Now, if you start making more income and you have more modified adjusted gross income, which I've talked about in a thousand different videos on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, your premiums could go significantly higher for sure. But just every Joe Snuffy out there and Jane Snuffy out there is paying about 180 a month just in premiums alone. That does not cover co-payments. That does not cover deductibles. That does not cover your premiums for Medicare, uh, Medicare Advantage or Medigap. It doesn't cover any of that. It just covers your premiums alone. So when you factor on that, that's where bulk, the bulk of the cost comes. Now, they do say the main source of retired household health care costs are co-payments for Medicare covered, but we already talked about that. Long-term care costs can be quite significant. All right, so this is what I want to talk about. This is where we're trying to get uh, people are trying to make people nervous. Long-term care costs can be quite significant, and your long-term care costs is not covered by Medicare. About so listen listen to this critically important. I remember this is from 2010, and the numbers have actually dropped since. But about one third of individuals turning 65 in 2010 will need at least three months of nursing home care. All right, one so 33 percent of individuals turning 65 in 2010 will need three months of nursing home care. Does that mean anything to you? 90 days. That's the elimination period for most long-term care insurance policies. In fact, nowadays it's probably 180 days simply because uh, they got to get the premiums down. So a lot of people who have long-term care are going to have an elimination period of 180 days, which is six months. It used to be 90 was a default because most people needed long-term care facilities for 90 days, which the bulk is picked up by Medicare. That's exactly right. 24% uh, will need it for more than a year. So remember, of the uh, the people turning 65, all right, so that's a sub, <laughs> subset of the population as a whole, 24% will need it for more than a year. Uh, that's uh, long-term care, uh, nursing home care. Now, that could be home health care as well. Um, and only 9% will need, again, this is 2010, it's changed since then, 9% will need it for more than five years. All right, so just let's go on these numbers, and it's not nearly as bad today as it was back in 2010. All right, so let's just say you're one of the 24% from 2010 who need it for a one year. How much does it cost? The annual cost for nursing home is 71,000 for a semi-private room. All right, so there's a one in four chance if you hit 65 that you'll need, and again, this is older now, the numbers are better today, but let's just go over this. A one in four chance if you need nursing home that you'll spend $71,000 that's the average, all right? 71,000 bucks. There's only one in four chance. How do you protect yourself from that? Well, you ever heard of savings? Uh, crazy, right? I mean, it's not insurance, it's savings. Just put some money on the side for savings. Crazy. Um, alternatively, employing a home health aid, which a lot of people are starting to do more and more, costs about, for five days a week, costs about $22,000 a year. Medicare pays a maximum of only 100 days of nursing home coverage, nursing home care, Medicaid, Again, that's for poor people. Support for long-term care is subject to strict income and asset limitations. So I just I want to point this out. Now I'm going to show something a little bit more recent. About one third of individuals. Now that sounds high. 
will need some form of nursing home coverage. Okay. Will your long-term care coverage cover that? Nope. Nope. They're not because you have this, what's called an elimination period of a certain amount of time. The deductible Medicare will cover the first basically 90 to 100 days as we talked about. So the vast majority of people are not going to need any long-term care at all. They're just not. Now, the 9% of the people, and again, it's really about 5% today, and I'll show you that in just a second, who have it over five years, those people are going to need, a, they're going to be in a world of hurt when it comes to the long-term care, because if they don't have a long-term care insurance policy, the catastrophic situation is going to doom them. I know that for a fact. I've had many clients who needed long-term care policies, but I've had many, 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 many more who had long-term care policies and never used it for sure. All right, so let me show you something else now. I thought this was interesting. Uh, right here. How many seniors really end up in nursing homes? And this is from 2016. And so we got a little bit more population, a uh, little bit more studies on this. According to U.S. Bureau of Census, slightly over 5 oh man, slightly over 5% of the 65 plus population occupy nursing homes. Oh, what happened? Oh, got to get that out of the way. Uh, come on, man. All right, slight, oh, yeah, there we go. Slightly over 5% of the 65 plus population occupy nursing homes, congregate care, assist living, and board and care homes. And about 4 2% are in the nursing home at any given time. So going back to 24% needed for more than a year, but is that the same 24%? Can that not change? All right. So that's the issue. So I take a little bit of umbrage with this BC report because I do believe that there's a rotating uh, person that some are in the nursing home, some are out, some are in, some are out. So according to U.S. Bureau of Census, slightly over 5% of the 65 plus population occupy nursing homes. That's it, 5% of the over 65. Um, and 4.2% are in nursing homes at any given time. The, the rate of nursing home use increases with age from 1.4% to the young old, 65, probably about 70, to 24.5% of the oldest old. Almost about 50% of those older nine, than 95 are living in nursing homes. So that is what's skewing this number right here is that the vast majority of those people are going to be the, over the age of 95. Now, I'm not saying for you to jump off a bridge at 94 years old, but I am saying Let's think this through now. What is the likelihood that you're going to survive till you're beyond 95? And even if you do, only 50% of those beyond 95 are in a nursing home. Now watch this. As the baby boom generations uh, and many are considered whether they need to have long-term care insurance, one of the first questions that it asks is, what are the odds I will end up in a nursing home? What percentage of today's elderly need this type of care? First, 5% of the older population lives in nursing homes with an average life expectancy of six months upon entrance. Average life expectancy. All right, so 5% of the older population lives in a nursing home with an average life expectancy of six months. That's it. Second, you can assume that all things being equal, we can expect an equal proportion of baby boomers to reside in nursing homes at any given time. There is an estimated 78 million baby boomers, so approximately 5% or 3.9 million are expected to head for these facilities. Today, a senior citizen, 65 or older, has about a one in four chance spending time in a nursing home, skilled care, skilled care facility. <sighs> one in four chance once you hit the age of 65. And the average life expectancy is, or the average time of stay is, 60, is uh, six months. Third, and where the predictions about baby boomers and nursing homes get a little bit fuzzy, the types of facil facilities available to the elderly are increasing. For example, 10 years ago, the elder uh, lived, elderly lived in a home, residential or nursing home, skilled care, and that was it. Now housing options for uh, elders are becoming increasing due to the introduction of custodial care facilities, adult daycare, uh, and assisted living facilities. And they're popping up all over the place. Finally, factor in policies like reverse, reverse mortgages, which allow dependent elders to stay in their own homes using their equity to pay for in-home care. All right, so what do we know for sure? About 14% of the people over the age of 65 have two to three chronic conditions that erode their ability to live independently. While we might not know exactly how many baby boomers will reside in a nursing home, we do know that about 14% of this population will become vulnerable enough to require extra care. Based on that percent, based on that statistic, we can expect nearly 11 million vulnerable baby boomers requiring assistance. Um, 
and, and so that that's what I'm talking about. So uh, yes, some of you are going to need care. I, I don't deny that. I don't deny that. But there is this thing called savings accounts where you can save money aside to have that money available for if you need care. All right. It's not hard to do. You just put the money aside and you say, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to self insure. That's my method of paying for the set, the skills I need. And by the way, if I don't need it, that money can go and be transferred to my heirs because the likelihood of by needing it is quite small. It's quite remote. Certainly so much more remote than these kind of studies that say, oh my goodness, wrong. The bulk of that is, is already built into your plan. Medicare Part B, Part D premiums, co-insurance, and all these things, co-payments, it's just, ah. And so I'd, I'd sit there and I'd say, what, why are we scaring people to say they're all going to be in nursing homes? It's just not factually correct. Why are we scaring people to say they're going to be destitute? It's just not factually correct. It's not. At the end of the day, too, worst case scenario is you sell your home. And you go to a nursing care. Okay, say your home's worth 250000 bucks. That'll get you a lot of coverage. That'll get you four years of coverage depending on where you live. So if you're an average person, let's just say the average, it's not even close to the average. If say the average person needs a year of a nursing home care and it costs, we'll say 80,000 bucks. Well, you got a home, you got a home equity, you got a home. If you don't have a home, you got savings. If you don't have savings, uh, well, hopefully then you're going to be on Medicaid, which is too bad, but you still can pay somebody to come in and help you. I know it's not a right answer for everybody, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of different options out there than just worrying sick. And I can't tell you how many retirees do that. All right. So last I want to show you here, I thought it was pretty interesting. This is elder somebody law in the Florida. Um, so he talks about Florida. There are 4.7 million senior citizens utilizing nursing home care. Uh, 730 assisted living facilities, 1.4 skilled nursing facilities, nursing home. Um, there are about 16,000 nursing homes uh, nationwide. Okay. Uh, let's see. I want to tell you about uh, 10,000 Americans turn 65 every day. 5% of older adults age 65 living in a nursing home. Again, 5% of older adults live in a nursing home. Of those, about uh, 50% of nursing home residents are 85 or older. 35% are the age of 75 and 84, blah, blah, blah. Uh, most, uh, let's see, we are talking about one. Well, only 5% of nursing or of older adults or any are in a nursing home in any given specific specific point in time about 25 percent of older adults will require nursing home care at some point again the average time is about six months that we talked about approximately 30 percent of nursing home residents will recuperate and move back in their communities 36 percent leave nursing homes because they're being transferred to another nursing nursing home or hospital unfortunately about 25 percent will exit a nursing home only when they have died and 10% uh, relief for other reasons. So the vast majority of people uh, who are in nursing homes don't end up there for sure. That's just a fact. Uh, but I want to point this out. Uh, nursing home care is an undeniably expensive without long-term care insurance. Uh, Medicaid planning has become essential to all but the wealthiest people in Florida. All right, I just, I want to get off him because I don't want to hammer him too much. All right, Medicaid is for poor people. If you're not poor, don't plan for Medicaid. There are people who have no assets, who need the help of the government. The idea that I'm gonna give away my assets so I can plan for Medicaid, I just find it's just, I, I, I find it offensive. And I'm sorry if you feel this way, you know, if you disagree with me. It's not, if you've been blessed to live in this country, have savings, and you can't afford you know $100,000 of nursing home coverage, if that, even if that were to come to fruition, I just find that to be offensive that we're going to say we're going to squirrel away our money over here, hide it from you know the government so we can get a Medicaid facility. A couple of things wrong with that is you've been blessed with having the assets available to you. Two, you've never even been in a Medicaid facility. They're not pleasant places, my friends. Go to one and see if you want to go there yourself. I'm telling you, the answer is no. And thirdly, what's wrong with spending your assets that you accumulated for your own, not luxurious, but at least a more comfortable stay. I just don't understand why this is what we were allowing people to take advantage of the tax code to hide their assets so they can qualify for Medicaid. Don't do that. It's wrong because there are people who need that money and Medicaid is dying on the vine as we sit here today. It doesn't have nearly the kind of revenue coming in that's going out. Not even close because so many people are abusing it for, without question. Medicare is hurting too and Medicare is wonderful to reduce the catastrophic cost 
of insurance costs to senior citizens who can't go back to work anymore. And so the more people are abusing these things, the more you're putting the emphasis on the lower income people who are not going to be able there to get coverage when they need it most. So don't do that. There are lots of different strategies we can do to make sure that you have the coverage you need without breaking the break of the bank. But let's not pretend we're paupers so we can get Medicaid. Just, uh, just don't do that. All right. At the end of the day, that's my soapbox. But at the end of the day, what you should do is you should squirrel away a little bit of money on the side. when you. And I have long-term care insurance, my friends. I'm 47. I do have long-term care. And the reason is because if something were to happen to me and or my spouse, my wife, Charlotte, and we needed long-term skilled nursing care, we, my family would be destitute. We couldn't afford it. You should get long-term care when you're young, when it's cheap, for sure. That way, you're, you're, that risk is now being put in, back in that community. Remember that? We said all these people are in the community in a pool. They're all funding the pool. And somebody's going to get hit with a catastrophic issue. We just don't know who that one person is. So I'm part of this huge pool of other people funding this. In case that were to be me, I want to make sure I'm covered because there's no other source of income for my wife. If I got hit with a stroke or something like that, she's going to be destitute and have to file bankruptcy just like that. Now, when you hit 65 and above and hopefully your house is paid off and all these other things and you can't afford long term care insurance anyway because it's so doggone expensive. Well, at that point, you don't need to sweat it because the likelihood of you using it is, is small, minute for sure. The likelihood of me using it is small, minute for sure. But it's cheap because I was so young when we bought it. And so I look at the likelihood of me using it versus the catastrophic event were it to happen versus the, the risk of that happening. And for me, it's worth, you know, I guess 100 bucks a month for my wife and me. Pff, that's money well spent, in my opinion. But if it's 500 bucks a month for just you, and eh, I don't know about that. So anyway, I just don't worry too much. Now, you should get a full-fledged financial plan to look over all ins and outs of all the things you got with Medicare, all your health insurance needs, your current situation, whatnot, absolutely. But don't worry so much. Relax. Take a breath. It's going to be okay. And if you can get long-term care, please don't take this. I'm telling you not to. I'm not. I'm just saying at the end of the day, if you can't or you wish you would have got it, I just I think at the end of the day, there are other things you can do to prepare and just still be comfortable in retirement without just worrying so much. All right. If you like this, please subscribe below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up. Always helpful. I mean, if you want to give me a thumbs down, apparently YouTube takes thumbs down in consideration, too. And they say, hey, this episode's getting a lot of content for sure. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the little bell notification down there. Uh, I, all my other stuff at heritagewealthplanning.com, my blog, my YouTube post, um, uh, my podcast. You can find those all at heritagewealthplanning.com. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time at Heritage Wealth Planning. Thanks, guys.